Hello and welcome to the English Lesson Cafe podcast, where you can listen in on our conversations to improve your English. My name is Mark and I'm here with my wife. My name is Hillary. We are back again with more of our daily life conversations to help you learn as you listen. We left off last week with another addition to our growing family. And so we'll begin today with the year 2005, Nashville, Tennessee. Yes, it was 2005. Mark Jr. was a little over two years old, and Caleb was just a little over a year old. Another member of our family was in the hospital in Nashville, Tennessee. Also known as Music City. We had gone to visit and support his family while he was in the hospital. And on the way there, I stopped to get a pregnancy test because I thought I might have been pregnant. The pregnancy test turned out to be positive. However, the lines on the test were faint, so I thought it could have been a false positive. So although I told Mark that it was positive, I told him that it could be a false positive because the lines were not very defined. And then a couple of months later, we took a little trip. Do you want to tell him about that, Mark? So this was September 2005. We headed down to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and this was around Labor Day, which is a very popular time of year for people to visit Myrtle Beach. Labor Day in the United States happens on the first Monday of September, and so that gives you a time frame. We actually stayed in a pretty cool place. It's a campground. A lot of people around the world call it a caravan park. It's a place where people have campers, trailers. They pull behind their car. The campers and the trailers have places that you can sleep, has a little kitchen, has a little living room a lot of times. Some of these campers you may actually drive, and those would be motorhomes. This particular campground had places for campers, motorhomes, but it also had houses that you could rent, and it was on the beach. You were going to head back home Monday, and then I was going to... Because of work? Yes. It always gets in the way of enjoyment well don't worry you never made it we were there for two or three days the place where we were staying had a golf cart and people would drive their golf carts to different places inside the campground if they needed to go to the little grocery store or if they wanted to go to the arcade or even if they wanted to go down to the beach so our children were sleeping mark's mom and dad were there in the same house where we were staying so they watched our boys while Mark and I were going to go down to the beach. Mark went around to get the golf cart, and I waited in front of the house for him. While he goes to get the golf cart, I feel the baby move for the first time, but I didn't tell him because it was just a slight movement, and I I kept thinking it had to be something else. Do you want to tell how the next few months went? So we get back to Tennessee, and due to different reasons and circumstances we decided that we were going to make a move and we were going to move to Myrtle Beach we ended up moving to Myrtle Beach in October yes very quickly so just a real quick story I used to paint houses for a living and so this was going to be my plan I hooked up with somebody about some work and I already had some work lined up so I could hit the ground running when I got there work-wise. And so we knew that you could stay in this campground for a discounted rate during the off season. We found a place pretty quick to to be able to move into. We had a lot of things that were left behind and a lot of furniture even that was left behind. But when we moved, we moved into a home inside of the campground that was fully furnished. So it had couches, it had beds, it had kitchen table, It had a a washing machine and a dryer. And so it was everything that we needed was in that house that we were renting. But obviously, none of it belonged to us because it belonged to the people we were renting from. But at least we did have everything we needed in that um, rental home since it was furnished when we got there. We get there at night and I'm going to talk to the people the next day about the work that was lined up for me. We get settled in. Next day, I see the person, and they're like, we got some bad news. I'm like, okay. They said, the company that we have here just disbanded. (laughs) is not anymore. It was over. 
there was no business that I was going to get painting contracts with. I expected to have work when I came down. They expected I would have work when I came down. Something transpired and the job opportunity had expired. (laughs) So I think from what I remember that the person told you that it had only happened a couple of days before we arrived or they would have called you. It was kind of frustrating. It was a surprise. It was not devastating because I knew that things would work out. Somehow, God would provide a way. God would take care of whatever needed to be taken care of. And so, I don't know how long after we had moved down there that you found out for sure that you were pregnant. Well, I was just thinking about that. Your family came to visit for Thanksgiving. and Thanksgiving is in November, towards the end of November. And I remember telling your family that I was pregnant. And so sometime between October when we moved down there and November, I do remember I took another pregnancy test. I remember that. And this time it was it was a very clear positive. I had an inclination, obviously. And so after that, I started looking for an OBGYN. So went to a doctor. She talked to me about a few things, talked to me about taking some prenatal vitamins and told me to come back. I think it was in like a week or so. It was very soon after that that she wanted to get an ultrasound of the baby to make sure everything was okay. They found out at the ultrasound that I was about four to five months along and told me that my due date would be February the 28th. Said that the baby was growing, looked perfect in size, and everything was good as far as the baby's health was concerned. The doctor printed off some pictures for me to bring home and I came home and showed them to Mark. We talked to his parents about the baby, called my parents, talked to them about the baby. And then, like I said, his sister's brother-in-law and nephew came down to visit at Thanksgiving. And that's when I was able to show them the ultrasound pictures and tell them that I was in fact pregnant again. I can remember when I found out And it was more of a surprise than obviously the other two were. I guess mainly because we had just moved down. We made a big move. I was going to have a change in a job situation that fell through. And we were living in a temporary situation because it was seasonal. So we knew we would have to look for another house eventually. It was kind of strange, to say the least. It wasn't anything that we had experienced before. So it was a little bit different. And then, like he said, we had temporary housing. We had just moved. We knew no one in the area. And then a vehicle that only carries four people. I knew God was going to take care of whatever issues we had, whatever shortcomings there were, whatever questions there might have been, which was true because within a fairly short period of time, I found a couple houses to paint inside the campground. So this was October, November. So now the weather's starting to get cooler. Not cold in Myrtle Beach, but the weather's starting to change. There's times that it does get cold. Hillary gets a whole lot colder than I do. And so when I say things are not cold, she might be over there. Looks like an Eskimo. Well, I was going to mention this too as far as seasons. Mark Jr. and Caleb were both born in Tennessee in the summer. And so it was difficult being pregnant in the summer in Tennessee. With Mark Jr., we were staying in um, the midwife's house, as we told you. So she had an air conditioner, she had fans, she had whatever we needed in order for me to stay cool. However, when I was pregnant with Caleb, I was at our house in Tennessee most of the time, and we did not have air conditioning, and it being June, July in Tennessee and the humidity. But then this time I was pregnant during the fall and winter. We were in the house there in the campground and we had the heat on obviously because it was winter. I remember looking at you and saying, I'm going to pass out. It's so hot in here. And I went outside and sat outside. But for me to be so hot... (laughs) was very unusual so we go through december the next year begins so now it's 2006 2006 in january and something very good happened in january i had been looking for work when i was at the paint store the gentleman was there picking up some paint for the establishment that he was the manager of and the lady behind the counter Mm -hmm. she told him she said hey so this guy's looking for some work and so he asked what i do and i told him and he said meet me Monday and we'll talk about some things and 
I'll let you know what we need. I got the job and I was there for seven and a half years. So that was a blessing. The Lord opened up a door for us. It turned out to be a great place to work. We really only have a couple more months before the arrival. We had done all of our children before this, our two boys, we had done with a midwife. So this was a very different experience for me to be going to an OBGYN, going to a doctor's office every month or every week when it got closer. Everything was very different. Speaking of different, this time I had a different attitude and I wanted to know if I was carrying a girl or a boy. This pregnancy was very different. I was very sick. Every day, I couldn't even go eat breakfast. It was bad sickness for the first few months of this pregnancy. There was just so many little things that were different, and I was convinced that it was a girl. I tried to talk Mark into it (laughs) several times, and he, as he said the last time, he thinks it's the greatest surprise to wait and find out if it's a girl or a boy. One time... I was going to an ultrasound appointment by myself and I was so excited because I was going to go in there and I was going to find out if it was a girl or a boy and I was going to keep it a secret, but I was going to find out. And when she did the ultrasound, she said, do you want to know? And I said, yes. And the baby's backside was turned and she could not tell if it was a boy or a girl. So I came home still not knowing if I was going to have a boy or a girl. I was kind of disappointed. So we go through January. Mark's got his job now. Everything's going well. We get into February. February 28th was the due date. February 28th comes and goes. And I think that very day or the day before, I had an appointment with OBGYN. And she's measuring me and talking to me and listening to the baby's heartbeat. And I remember her exact words. She's like, don't have a seven pound baby on me. She's like, I'm gonna let you go until March the 6th. She said, March the 6th, we're going to induce you, which for anyone who's pregnant, that means that they're gonna bring you in, give you some medicine that will start the contractions. She was afraid that the baby was gonna be too big for me to deliver and I was gonna have to have a C-section. So March the 4th comes and that night, I remember mentioning to Mark that that my stomach was hurting. And at that point, because I'm so far past my due date, everything is me thinking that the baby's coming. I woke up the next morning and started having contractions. But I'd had contractions before, and they'd always stopped. So through the contractions, I took a shower. I got Mark Jr. ready for church. I got Caleb ready for church. And we got in the car and headed to church. And the whole way to church, I'm having contractions. And when we get to church, Mark's dad and mom said we need to take her to the hospital. We get there. They took me up to the delivery floor, put me on a bed, laid me down so that they could monitor the baby. I laid there for maybe five minutes and the contractions totally stopped. Since they stopped, they told me I could get up and walk. So they got us into a regular room and said, you can walk and maybe the contractions will start back up. We walked up and down the hallway in the hospital for hours upon hours. And it wasn't until about 6 p.m. that our doctor came and said, you can only walk so much. (laughs) So I walked all those hours and the contractions never started back up. She said, since we were gonna induce you tomorrow, we'll go ahead and do it tonight. They started the medications that would make the contractions begin again. And then a couple of hours later, there's a baby. There she is. This doctor had an interesting accent. Yeah. Do you remember where she was from? I want to say it was Greece or something. I can't do her accent, obviously. She looked at me and said, well, it's a girl. I was crying and <laughs> screaming because this birth was so different. With Mark and Caleb, it was a slower process. Well, this one, I went from having no contractions to the worst contractions in no time because of that medicine that they gave me. So it was a lot harder. Yeah. Also, the baby ended up being eight pounds and two ounces. Well, there you go. She didn't have a seven pound baby. I didn't have a seven pound baby, <laughs> but I think everyone was surprised that she was so big. Yeah. And so they laid her on my chest and I got to hold her for the first time. It yeah. was very sweet. A beautiful baby girl. Neither one of us really, we didn't care 
whether it was a boy or girl, with any child. It was whatever we have. We prayed it was healthy. Of course, I wanted five boys for the basketball team. But as we all know, <laughs> it was kind of just a silly idea anyway from my childhood. It was obviously just as exciting in a different way to know that I had a little girl. And it was just, it was a very special moment. Obviously couldn't wait for the boys to meet her. And we were blessed to have good deliveries for all three children, safe deliveries. We had had the names picked out for a long time. From the time I was pregnant with Mark Jr., we had picked out boy names. We had a girl name picked out for a long time. But when we came to the hospital, we did not know if it was going to be a boy or a girl. And we could not agree on a boy name. The whole time we were in the hospital doing that walk, we were talking about boy names. And I think we finally decided that we would agree on one. But praise the Lord, it turned out to be a girl. And she took that name that we had been carrying for years, Sarah Grace Gould. The day after Sarah was born, they brought Mark and Caleb to meet their sister. So I remember them. I was laying in the bed holding her, and I remember them coming in. They just just walked over there like they knew exactly what they were doing. It was very interesting how they reacted. We've got a picture of Mark Jr. holding Sarah that first day and Caleb holding Sarah that first day. So they held her and talked to her and were yeah. excited to have another baby coming to the home. The next day, I got to bring her home. All of us under one roof again. I do remember when we got back and we had the bed for Sarah, how often the boys would just love to come in there and just talk to her, or just have a good time with her. They were just fascinated to have another little tiny person in the house. I'm thankful that he gave us a healthy child. And now Sarah's 18, Caleb's 20, and Mark's 21. How fast time flies is crazy. I'm trying to make my wife cry again. We've said this about all three children. Well, we haven't said about Sarah yet, but I'm about to. <laughs> they were all really good babies. Oh, yeah. Like, obviously, they cried at night sometimes and had to get up to, <laughs> I had to get up to feed them or whatever. But they were really good babies. And I was just telling Sarah about this yesterday. I didn't even realize this. But when Sarah was born, we had three children, two and under. Because Mark was still two. Yeah. He was a few months from three. Caleb was a few months from two. And Sarah was just a baby. Yeah. So we had three children, two years old and under. Mark was becoming a toddler. Yeah. So that was enough to keep me busy. And then Caleb was kind of more easygoing. And then Sarah comes along. And she, she's, as a baby, she's just really sweet, really easy to get along with. And then she, as she grows, it seems that there's nothing that gets her down. She yeah. bounces right back up and she has a very positive attitude. Very positive attitude. And after we brought her home, it was only like a month or a month and a half before we had to move. So we're moving with basically a newborn and then two toddlers. Yeah. So we moved to the other place and um, get everything set up there. Sarah watched her brothers play t-ball. Right. And then the next year, she's like, sign me up. I want to do that. And then she watched them play basketball. Then she wanted to be a cheerleader. So she's yeah. then cheerleading. Oh, she did soccer, too. I she forgot about that. She did soccer, too, yeah. So, so. <clears throat> yeah, so that's true. Sarah played soccer, t-ball, and she did cheerleading. Then and she did the archery, too. And then she did archery for a little while. <laughs> that wasn't her cup of tea. There was one, one more thing I wanted to mention. Before each child was born, I had decided that I would buy each of them a gift, a special stuffed animal or something that would be there the day they were born. And so I did this for Mark Jr. I bought him a blue dog. Caleb had a caterpillar that was green and yellow, and it lit up and played music. They liked them, but they did not get attached to them. Sarah, I bought her a bear, and that bear has been with us for 18 years. <laughs> She carried it with her everywhere she went. At one time, we evacuated for a hurricane, and she kept saying, I left Barry. <laughs> Barry's on my bed. And she was so concerned. And so as soon as you got home, you said, Barry's still on the bed. It's okay. Yeah. You had, Barry was having a hurricane party. <laughs> Sarah still has a very spunky personality. She's still a lot of fun. She loves to read. She loves to read. She would stay in her room for hours reading. Just a very sweet, loving girl. And that's the end of our children. <laughs> um, what a great way to put it. <laughs> and that's the last child that we have to do an episode about. 
And she rounds out the end of our Growing Our Family episodes in the podcast. Soon, they will be on the podcast, and you'll get a chance to meet them and get to know them a little bit better. And so, do you have anything else for us today, Hillary? Yeah. When you introduce them, make sure you tell them that they have all of their great qualities from me. (laughs) When you hear how sweet and kind and smart that they are, just remember, that's my genes coming out. And with that, (laughs) ladies and gentlemen, we shall end the broadcast. Yeah. And so, anyway, we thank you all for joining us again today. Uh, Please comment. And uh, share. Share with your friends and family. We hope you have a great day. Thanks again for joining us. And we hope this helps you to join the conversation. Mm-hmm.